Okay. Uh, so it is a pleasure to introduce the last uh, speaker of this uh, day, of the day, uh, Marcus Kreiser from Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro, Puki, who is going to talk on some applications of singularity theory to differential geometry. I'd like to thank Marcelo for the invitation to talk so that accepting the first day of January. So, and uh, it, I will talk uh, about this, some applications of singularity theory eh, uh, to differential geometry. I have been studying some topics of singularity theory in the last years, and uh, I find they, uh, these topics quite interesting, and I will try to, to, to tell you some of these results. Uh, here is the outline of the talk. It is divided in two parts. First part is singular surface projections and extensions. The other part is contact with models, focal sets, and line fields. Uh, so singular manifolds appear naturally as projections of smooth manifolds immersed, immersed in higher dimensional spaces. For example, a planar cusp is obtained as the projection of a, sp a spatial smooth curve. And also appears, singular manifolds also appears as extensions of smooth surfaces. Uh, for example, a developable surface may have singularities at its line of regression. Many classes of surfaces in three-dimensional spaces have a Weierstrass type representation. In this case, the extension to singular points is natural. And moreover, the singular surface can be lifted to a small, smooth surface in a higher dimensional space so that the former be becomes the projection of the, the smooth surface. So, What uh, the, the singular points of smooth manifolds appear as singular points of smooth maps, and singularity theory, broadly speaking, classifies singular points of, of maps uh, up to coordinate change and diffeomorphisms of the ambi ambient space. Uh, the classification of singularities up to diffeomorphisms gives very valuable geometric information about them. So uh, now I will talk about a specific topic, which are affine maximal maps. Uh, an immersion, a surface in R3 without parabolic points, so all points are elliptic or hyperbolic. It, we say that the immersion is affine maximal if the affine mean curvature is everywhere zero or equivalent, the surface is a critical point of the affine area functional. Uh, it was proved in 1982 that elliptic surfaces, critical points of the affine area functional are in fact maximum points and since then this surface which were originally called a fine minimal, now they are called a fine maximal. So. This surface, this class of surface have a Weierstrass type representation. In the elliptic case, uh, they are obtained as like that. You can start with a harmonic map, Ni, from R2 to R3, each coordinate is harmonic. 
And uh, then you can define a, an immersion by Lily Everest formula, which are presented here. This is derivative with respect to one parameter, u. It's the cross product of ni, ni v, v, the other parameter, and cv derivative is minus ni cross cross product ni u. And uh, if we start with the harmonic map, we obtain the uh, the elliptic affine maximum map with conormal vector field ni. Conversely, any elliptic affine maximal map can be obtained in this way. Uh, the map is an immersion if and only if this determinant ni, ni, u, ni, v is different from zero. So the singular points appear naturally as curves in such surfaces. If uh, the only complete affine, complete surface, affine maximal, elliptic, uh, is the paraboloid. So every other complete affine, max, affine maximal, elliptic surface necessarily have singularities. This also holds for hypersurfaces. In the hyperbolic case, we have a similar representation. Just instead of starting with a harmonic map, we start with a map satisfying ni u v equals zero. And then you obtain, by similar Lely Everest formulas, the immersion. This, this, uh, if you integrate this equation, you obtain a hyperbolic affine maximal map with uh, conormal vector field ni. Conversely, any hyperbolic affine maximal map can be obtained in, in, in this way. The map is an immersion if and only if the determinant ni, ni, u, ni, v different from zero. And the singular curve also appear naturally in the hyperbolic case. So this is... Uh, we have a surface with singularity, very natural way. Mm, what's the space? In which space we shall analyze this affine maximal map? Since they are represented by harmonic uh, maps satisfying e u v equals zero, these are the space of hyperbolic affine maximal maps and the space of elliptic affine maximal maps. I, we shall represent by harmonic maps uh, in our tree. Uh, as, if she, so she be, so as we shall see below, cuspidal edge and swallow tails are stable singularities in these spaces. Moreover, generic affine maximal maps admit only cuspidal edge and swallow tails. And how can we prove this? These are known results. We s first, we uh, lift the surface to a higher dimensional space by considering Psini. This is an immersion in R3 times the projective three sp choose three space is uh, Excuse me, projective three space. This is wrong. Is a, this here is a Legendrian immersion. This implies, the, this, uh, by definition, that C is in fact a front. And a singular point of C is non degenerate if the derivative is of rank one. In this case, you can parameterize the singular curve denoted by gamma and consider the no direction of the derivative, denote it by eta. And we shall use the, the following criteria. This is also very well known. Criteria for singularities of fonts. 
consider a point in the domain, non-degenerate singular point of a prompt. The germ is locally diffeomorphic to a cuspidal edge if and only if this, uh, the no direction of the derivative is not a multiple of the tangent the, uh, to the singular curve. And it is locally diffeomorphic to a swallow tail if and only if the, the new direction is a multiple of the tangent to the singular curve, but the derivative of the, the, this determinant of the new direction and tangent to the singular curve is not zero. This is a, a very useful result in this paper uh, of 2005. So you can use this criteria for many examples. Uh, this here, we start with the conormal map. This is a hyperbolic case. You observe that Ni uv equals zero. Then you obtain this discriminant here. Uh, can parameterize the, the singular curve. The, the new direction is just easy to see, one minus one and the, the tangent direction and null direction are not multiple of each other, and then they conclude that the singular points, not only zero, but all others are cuspidal edges. Here, uh, another example of a swallowtail. Start again with a, a Connor mob map satisfying Ni uv equals zero. The discriminant is here. In this case, uh, the new direction is a multiple of gamma prime of zero, but the second derivative of gamma is independent of the new direction, so we'll conclude the singular point is a swallowtail here. You can also obtain for the elliptic case, these were for the hyperbolic case, this uh, conormal is harmonic, and then you, by the same criteria, you obtain uh, that uh, the, the singular curve is a, swell, is a cuspidal edge, because the, the new direction is zero, one, the, the tangent gamma prime is one, three, so they are linearly independent. And finally, the last example is a swallow tail, elliptic swallow tail, where you start again with a, a harmonic conormal. Uh, the singular line is obtained here. And the same thing, the, the here is the new direction is a multiple of the tangent to the, the singular curve, but the second derivative uh, is not a multiple of the no direction, so we'll have here a uh, swallowtail. So these are all examples, all types of stable singularities that appears in the class of affine maximal maps. Improper affine spheres are a subclass of uh, affine maximal <coughs> maps. Uh, it is the, if you consider a graph of a function, then it is an uh, improper affine sphere if it satisfies this Mongean-Pair partial, partial differential equation. Uh, the plus case is elliptic improper affine sphere. The minus case is uh, hyperbolic improper affine sphere. Equivalent definitions of improper affine sphere. Uh, C is an improper affine sphere. The Blaschke affine normal is constant. We, in this, we may assume it is C equals zero, zero, 001 corresponding to this equation. And also, in terms of the conormal, if the image of the conormal is contained in a plane, in this case here, we, sh we assume that the third coordinate is one. 
These are all equivalent definitions. And what about singularities of improper affine spheres? But uh, bef before uh, talking about singularities, I will talk about the space uh, which we are considering generosity. Since Ni is planar, a hyperbolic improper affine sphere can re be represented by a pair of planar curves, and an elliptic improper affine sphere can be represented by a holomorphic map. So these are the spaces of improper affine spheres. And in these spaces, we can uh, prove that generic improper affine maps admit only cuspidal edges and swallow tails as in the affine maximal maps. No, okay. Uh, we can generalize improper affine spheres to higher dimensions. Instead of starting with a pair of planar curves, we can start with a pair of Lagrangian surfaces in an even dimensional space, thus obtaining a class of improper affine spheres, call it center chart. I, also, this uh, improper affine sphere construction from a holomorphic map can be generalized uh, by considering a holomorphic map of n variables. And in this case, the improper affine sphere is called special. This, this, is, uh, this here is from Bowes Cortes, 2000. This other construction uh, we have done, I uh, have done together with uh, Wojtek and Pedro Rios in 2015. What, in terms of uh, singularities, we have verified that all simple singularities can be realized uh, either as center chart or special uh, improper affine spheres. I don't know of any other results in terms of the singularities of affine spheres. There are many, many questions, as you can see, that because, in fact, uh, if you are not in dimension two, in higher dimensions, it's difficult to represent the, the improper affine sphere and to define the space of improper affine spheres, and things are much difficult. This here we could do something because we define a subclass of this improper affine spheres. Now, this here is uh, something that uh, are not very usual in singularities congresses, but in fact, I like it. It's discrete surfaces. And uh, you can, for, exa for example, discrete affine maximal maps, you can consider discrete surface, which are maps from Z2 to R3 that be behaves like smooth affine maximal maps. Here you have some pictures, the, the paraboloid, helicoid, discrete helicoid, a discrete cubic surface. These are discrete affine maximal map as we have defined it in 2010. Uh, how do we represent the discrete affine maximal maps? Again, we can consider the conormal map from Z2 to R3, satisfying the Ni 1, 2. These are discrete derivatives, discrete derivatives equal to zero. And then you can obtain discrete lily Evers formulas to define the immersion. And the map is called a hyperbolic discrete affine maximal map. Until today, uh, there are no, I have not seen no definition of an analogous 
uh, discrete affine maximal map in the elliptic case. So this is something to be done. I would like to do it, but not until now. It's, uh, it's to have some maps from Z2 to R3 that have some kind of structure that uh, as in the hyperbolic case. Discrete in proper affine spheres, here is one of a hyperbolic type. And we, in some ca cases, we call those elliptic discrete in proper affine sphere. This was done in 2008. This theme, discrete surfaces, there are many, many people geometers working in discrete differential geometry. Today you can, f uh, these are some of them, and there are many others uh, working in differential geometry, but singularities of discrete surface, I myself know only of two papers, this one here in 2015 and the other in 2018, and these are discussing how to define the singularities for in the discrete case. And in fact, uh, I am trying to, to, to do something with my PhD student, Anderson, who is here, uh, about this uh, type of surfaces. What can we do about it? So now I've changed the topic. Né? The idea of this talk is just to give uh, some ideas how singularity theory can be useful for differential geometry. Né? So this, now I changed the, 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 the subject to other, <coughs> other uh, types of applications which are contact with models, focal sets, and light fields. Uh, the contact with linear space in the spheres determ determines some aspects of the geometry of submanifolds. For example, uh, in a planar curve, inflection points correspond to higher order point, uh, points of contact with lines while vertices correspond to higher order contact with circles. Focal sets, in general, are singular at higher order contact points. For a planar curve, the focal curve presents generically a cusp at a vertex, and the dual curve presents a cusp at an inflection point. There are some important line fields on a surface, like curvature and asymptotic lines. The former curvature lines are related to contact with hyperspheres, and the latter with contact with hyperplanes. Here in next section, we shall follow the, the book of Sidinha, Izumiya, Carmen, and Tari that uh, describe geometric aspects of surface and many recent results on this subject. This is a, a important reference in this subject. Uh, contact with the spheres and contact with quadrics. We say that a surface is distance squared function generic if for a, any A in R3, the distance square function the A has only singularities of type, type A1, A2, A3, A4, and D4. And one can prove that the distance square function generic surfaces are residual. The focal set is defined uh, by, as a, like that. You take the K i, i equal one, two, the principal curvatures at a point P of the surface. And then you take the image by the map P plus one over 
Ki and P, and this is called the ice focal surface. The ridge is the set of points such that the principal curvature is extremal along the associated curvature line. And this is a well-known theorem also, you can find in the book of Sidinia. And uh, if M is a distance square function generic surface, the focal surface presents a singularity if and only if P is a ridge or an umbilical point. If P is a ridge point and the ridge curve is transversal to the corresponding curvature line, the singularity is of type A3. If P is a ridge point and the ridge curve is tangent to the corresponding curvature line, the singularity is of type A4. If P is an umbilical point, the singularity is of type B4. Here are some examples. Singularity of type A3, this is the focal set, which is a cuspidal edge. Singularity of type A4, the, single, the, the focal set is a solo tail. Here are umbilical points, the focal set, the, the, the singularities of type D4 here. Now I pass to, to contact with quadrics. What about contact with quadrics? Uh, any point of a smooth surface admits an osculating quadric with second order contact. Quadratic points are those points which admit an osculating quadric with a third order contact. Gener generically, uh, quadratic points are isolated points of the surface. In the elliptic region, they are called ellipt nodes. In the hyperbolic region, they are called hyperbolic nodes. In the hyperbolic case, they are self-intersections of the flat nodal curve, the set of points where the asymptotic lines have inflections. Dar what are Darboux directions? At non-quadratic point, there is a three-dimensional family of quadrics which are with a second-order contact with M at P. Among these quadrics, there are three one-parameter families with the property that the contact function is a perfect cube. If P is a hyperbolic point, only one of these families is real. If P is elliptic, then all three families are real. At a generic parabolic point, two or three families coincide. The new directions of the perfect cubes are called the Darboux directions of M at P. And these are known since 1880. Uh, 1880. What are the types of contact? At a non-quadratic point, uh, if you consider a quad the quadrics with second order contact with the surface, the contacts must be of type E6, E7, or E8. These are all possibilities, generically. At a quadratic point, the type of contact depends on one parameter called the J invariant. As a question that I think it's interesting is, is there some focal set with singularities related to the contact with quadrics? What, what would be a focal set, a, a projective focal set? I don't know, but certainly should be related to congruence of lines in projective differential geometry, since there are many different types of projective normals that can be useful in this problem. Now let's consider implicit differential equations. Uh, 
the differential equations of curvature lines is given here. It's very well known. You take the first fundamental form, second fundamental form, and describe this bin binary differential equation of curvature lines. The differential equation of Darboux lines you can obtain as follows. This is a ternary differential equation. These coefficients are the coefficients of the cubic form of the surface, which, and the cubic form is obtained as nabla H. Nabla is the induced connection, affine connection, and H is the affine metric. So this, you can obtain a, a differential, ternary differential equation. These are the well-known curvature, lines of curvature around umbilics in the, uh, for uh, curvature lines. This is uh, called D1, D2, D3, the index are minus one half in the first two. In the third one, the index is one half. In the case of elliptic quadratic points, you, can, you have this, uh, these configurations of Darboux lines when the index one third, one third, and minus one third is also obtained by, by Juan Nuno Balesteros and Fukui. In the case of hyperbolic quadratic points, uh, there are four possible phase portraits. In this case, just one direction, one Darbu direction, so we'll have a line field. And uh, depends on the characteristic polynomial. This is characteristic polynomial with no root. And we call this focus. This we call it node with two and four characteristic lines. And this is a saddle point. Just to, to finish, uh, the, the last topic is about loner's conjecture. General loner's conjecture uh, is about a vector field obtained from a function of two variables, and you fix some n, and you take the, the, the n's derivative with respect to the bar of the function, and assume that it has a, an isolated zero in the origin. The conjecture of Launer says that uh, the index at the origin is not greater than n. This was conjecture was posed by Loner in 1948. Then there are some sketch of proofs. I don't know how to say it. The Chitos proposed this proof, but I think they are not so well accepted. People find it is not so correct. And until now, uh, it is still considered a conjecture. And uh, even in 2018, there, there was a paper of a French geometer who found a, a counterexample in the case n equal to for C infinite uh, vector fields. It's, uh, his name was uh, uh, Guilfoyle. But I think people are still in doubt about this conjecture. Even so, it's interesting to, to, to observe this phenomenon because uh, it's, uh, in all ex simple examples, uh, it works. What are the geometric interpretations of this, 
of the Launer's conjecture for n equal two. This is very well known. Uh, it says that the index of the curvature lines at an isolated Euclidean umbilical point is at most one. For n equal three, uh, in this paper we have shown that for semi-homogeneous points, we can give the, this answer, the, the index of the double lines at a, an isolated quadratic elliptic point is at most one. This is a, for semi-homogeneous points, is equivalent to the, to the Launer's conjecture. And if you, if you drop the semi-homogeneity semi con hypothesis, then we don't know, in fact, if we can describe the double lines uh, in such a way that the Launer conjectures uh, become uh, like that, we don't know. Uh, another question, just to, yes, I was thinking another day. The loudest conjecture must say something about this, the, the focal set, because uh, I don't know what, uh, but must say something. Uh, just uh, to finish a uh, uh, very short proof, of the, this semi-homogeneous elliptic quadratic points. Uh, we denote the k jet of the, the cubic form by ak plus ybk. We say that u0 v0 is semi-homogeneous if uh, it is zero until k equal n minus one and a n plus i b n is is an isolated singularity it has zero zero as an isolated singularity uh, for a semi homogeneous point of degree n the, the the index of the cubic form is equal to the degree of the map of this map here by a projective change of coordinates in a neighborhood of quadratic points. So in a quadratic point, the, the third jet is zero. And uh, in the fourth jet, we can drop the terms, the term in x, x2, y2. And we uh, get this normal form. And in this case, the cubic form is obtained like that, with, where a is are these guys here. Uh, and, and it's not difficult to prove that the, the one jet of the cubic form is zero, which means all these are zero, if and only if the four jet of g minus one half x two plus y two is zero. Uh, again, we can do the same thing for the I, n minus minus one jet, we start, uh, if the I n minus one jet of the cubic form is zero, then m is the graph of this guy here, where h is homogeneous of degree <laughs> n plus three. And in this case, you obtain the, the cubic form is exactly this guy, the derivative, third derivative of H in this form here. And this is the form that we want to, to use because it coincides with Launer's conjecture. The, this derivative has a, exactly this form, the third derivative with respect to this Z bar. And so from this, we conclude the that uh, for semi-homogeneous cubic form, the index of the true web is at most one. Thank you.